Job chapter 18 Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, When will you end these speeches? Be sensible and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as cattle and considered stupid in your sight? You, who tear yourself to pieces in your anger. Is the earth to be abandoned for your sake, or must the rocks be moved from their place? The lamp of a wicked man is snuffed out, the flame of his fire stops burning, the light in his tent becomes dark, the lamp beside him goes out. The vigour of his step is weakened, his own schemes throw him down. His feet thrust him into a net, he wanders into its mesh. A trap seizes him by the heel, a snare holds him fast. A noose is hidden for him on the ground, a trap lies in his path. Terrors startle him on every side and dog his every step. Calamity is hungry for him. Disaster is ready for him when he falls. It eats away parts of his skin. Death's firstborn devours his limbs. He is torn from the security of his tent and marched off to the king of terrors. Fire resides in his tent. Burning sulphur is scattered over his dwelling. His roots dry up below and his branches wither above. The memory of him perishes from the earth. He has no name in the land. He is driven from light into the realm of darkness and is banished from the world. He has no offspring or descendants among his people. No survivor where once he lived. People of the West are appalled at his fate. Those of the East are seized with horror. Surely such is the dwelling of an evil man. Such is the place of one who does not know God. Job chapter 19 Then Job replied, How long will you torment me and crush me with words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it is true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. If indeed you would exalt yourselves above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry, violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way so that I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honour and removed the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me a foreigner. They look upon me as a stranger. I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I'm loathsome to my own family. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me, my friends. Have pity, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. If you say, How we will hound him since the root of the trouble lies in him, you should fear the sword yourselves. For wrath will bring punishment by the sword, and then you will know that there is judgment. Psalm 29 
Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Sarion like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kurdish. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Proverbs chapter 24 Saying 20 Do not envy the wicked, do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence, and their lips talk about making trouble. Saying 21 By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Saying 22. The wise prevail through great power, and those who have knowledge muster their strength. Surely you need guidance to wage war, and victory is won through many advisers. Saying 23. Wisdom is too high for fools. In the assembly at the gate they must not open their mouths. Saying 24. Whoever plots evil will be known as a schemer. The schemes of folly are sin, and people detest a mocker. Saying 25 If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? Rescue those being led away to death, hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? Saying 26 Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Saying 27 do not lurk like a thief near the house of the righteous. Do not plunder their dwelling place. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Saying 28 Do not gloat when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice. Or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from them. Saying 29 Do not fret because of evildoers or be envious of the wicked, for the evildoer has no future hope and the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. Saying 30 Fear the Lord and the King, my son, and do not join with rebellious officials, for those two will send sudden destruction on them and who knows what calamities they can bring. These also are sayings of the wise. To show partiality in judging is not good. Whoever says to the guilty, you are innocent, will be cursed by peoples and denounced by nations. But it will go well with those who convict the guilty, and rich blessing will come on them. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Do not testify against your neighbor without cause. Would you use your lips to mislead? Do not say, I'll do to them as they have done to me. I'll pay them back for what they did. 
I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere, the ground was covered with weeds, and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man.